Hey everyone, I'm back with another video. It's gonna be a quick one, talking about my BART interview, kind of the article you're given. So if you haven't watched, I guess part one, I'll put it up here somewhere, but this one is really focusing on those of you who've had or having your BART interview coming up, how I kind of went about the article. So um, if you haven't come to my channel before, hi, my name is Mez. I am currently a second year medical student studying in London at BART, which has been really, really exciting so far. Um, yeah, feel free to subscribe if you want to, and I'll be posting a lot more content this year, which hopefully is a little bit more exciting than the stuff I've been posting so far. So the article, now this, like I said in my other video, really does throw a lot of people because you think, oh my god, reading, I don't want to do this, I didn't sign up for law or something like that. So definitely not something to worry about. I think why Bart kind of gives an article, again, I'm not part of the panel, people who decide it, but my kind of thinking behind it is it's to test whether you can fit the style of learning at Bart, which if you don't know is PBL learning, which stands for problem-based learning. And kind of in first and second year, and also I think in clinical years later on as well, you get given a piece of information, like an article, um, but it's more obviously <laughs> medicine focused, and you kind of work in your groups to come up with different learning objectives and defining key terms. And I was lucky the last two years, my PBL groups have been absolutely fantastic, absolutely smashed it. So you do like learn to kind of grow with them. They're kind of like your, I guess, form, you like, meet every week you do anatomy physiology clinical skills like lots of things together as a group which is nice you know you, you have like your kind of grounding people around you but um yeah so you get given the article then you go away research it and you come back the next week and present your thoughts and findings which is essentially what they're trying to get out of you in the interview with the article so treating it as a kind of process but it doesn't seem as daunting they just want to see you know can you do basically what we're going to ask you to do for the next two years at least and treat it as a research project i guess nothing too time intensive again you've only got two weeks and you probably have a million other better things to be doing but um i'm just going to go through kind of what i did and what i thought was helpful and things i wish i would have done at the time i think one of the big things that really helped was printing out the article um for me my one back in 2021, which seems ages ago now, was on obviously COVID because there was nothing else to really talk about, but shows that it is very much on recent topics. So again, I'm filming this on January 13th, 2023. So currently the vote to strike for the junior doctors and the nursing strikes that happened in the last couple of weeks are very, very topical. So they're kind of the things I'll be thinking the article might be on. Again, it will be recent, but it might not be on something that you're particularly familiar with, which is again, one of the reasons why they give it to you two weeks prior, so you can go and do extra reading on it. I'd say the first thing you do with the article, I think I printed it out, because I just like handwriting. I think it's very cathartic, kind of, you know, physically doing something, but if you're an iPad girly, go for it, you know, highlight, scribble all over it. How I'd recommend starting is before you, you know, go in and deep dive in each single line, just have a skim through it and see, you know, does anything stand out to me in particular? Because those are the things that are gonna, like, you feel and you impact on really well. So, you know, underline those in one colour and then make a list of them because when they ask you in the interview, you know, what, what did you find interesting about this article? And, you know, if you want to know more about what they asked in my interview, you can go watch the video where I talk about it. Um, but it's really, they keep it open and vague. They let you drive the conversation. So don't feel like you have to memorize the whole article because you probably will end up from the amount of times you read it, but you won't be um, given it in the interview. So you're expected to kind of have knowledge of at least a general overview of the topics and your thoughts on it. So yeah, once you've kind of have a, had a scan through, then go line by line. I think thinking of it as a term of PBL, I'll put here kind of the, I guess, seven step rule we get in like first year about how to go about PBL. As you go through med school, you kind of learn to condense it within your group and you get a bit more slick. The first thing we always do is go through any 
terms that we're unclear about and I think that's what you guys should definitely be doing I think there were definitely some words where I was like what the hell does this mean um and don't be afraid to say that you know there were some words you were unfamiliar with however you knew that once you looked them up they meant this and it helped aid your understanding and things like that are really important to do and they will like to see that you're proactive in you know furthering your understanding and your knowledge and then the second thing i did i kind of went almost paragraph by paragraph and again my article length was i think a side and a half but this has varied over the last couple of years i think the most i've seen is like three sides long so go paragraph by paragraph if something doesn't stick out to you immediately or you don't really feel connected or interested in that paragraph move on to the next one the total time in the interview that's given to that article is just like five to seven minutes so they're not expecting like a 300 page essay on it it's just very much you know summarize your thoughts on the article if it's more ethics related and you can think of the pillars and relate them back to something specific in the scenario that would definitely be a good shout to go for i'd say one thing that i did was kind of create a balanced argument i think that's also very important not only in the article but in general to any questions where you are asked to give your opinion on something as doctors and medical students you know when you're advising patients although it's completely okay to have your own opinion on something you can't force your own opinions onto a patient you have to give them all the information available to you and help them to make an informed decision and then you know support them in what they think is the best obviously acting in their best interest again i'm just throwing in all the ethical pillars in there but you know talking about one person's point of view or even your person your per, your own personal point of view and say things like i can understand how other people may think that xyz so as long as you can show you have an awareness of what other people's opinions might be on this topic i think that's something you can never go wrong with and if you come up with like three points for each that will definitely take you through the whole chunk so that's always a good kind of route you can take one thing i think i remember doing my form tutor at the time was my english teacher who taught me gcse so I gave her the article to kind of have a read over and um, we had quite quite a close relationship so I didn't feel uncomfortable talking to her so if you have a teacher you think you can trust and you know you can have a good conversation with whether it's science related or even from like a more humanities perspective I even like probably <laughs> would have given it to like one of my friends who studied humanities and thought you know what kind of things can they pull out from it because that's essentially what they do throughout their whole subject so definitely make the use of them if you have people around you who you feel comfortable talking to and um yeah just discussing with different people like even medics who either if you want to who have Bart's interviews because i'm pretty sure everyone gets given the same article otherwise it would be a bit unfair but um yeah you can share it with whoever you want the article isn't like it's been written by us at but it's taken from either like a newspaper or a magazine or something like it's available online from the last couple of years i've seen that it's all um kind of in lay terms so anyone could pick it up and read it and be able to understand it so there's not going to be any like hardcore scientific knowledge but they might throw in a couple of terms just to see you know who's going to be brave to kind of pick up on different things that they weren't sure of and actually did a lot of further research and you know find out a little bit more about it i think one thing also that might be worth picking up on is kind of looking at the reliability of the article this kind of took me all the way back to history gcse i still remember now this acronym called panda which i'll write somewhere here but this kind of helped me to figure out you know was the article reliable so looking at the first p which stands for purpose you know what was the point of the article like what kind of thing were they trying to get across was it to tell a story was it to try and convince you of some kind of thing their opinion was it to you know inform either the public or whoever was intended to read that article what was the purpose and then a for author 
So who wrote it? Um, and especially considering it's going to be some kind of thing to do with medicine and healthcare. Are they a legitimate doctor? And I mean a medical doctor, not a PhD doctor who probably hasn't done much clinical work, depending again on what the scenario is. So thinking, is the person who's talking about this actually seem legitimate? You know, do they have the experience to back up the facts that they're giving to you? Um, and take your views on that. I think in that sense, bias is also really interesting. A lot of people think of bias in the sense of if they're not um, a healthcare professional, they can be biased towards, you know, talking badly on like something. But you can also say, you know, if a healthcare professional has written an article on, you know, a piece of research or a new evidence, they might be more in favour of it because they have more knowledge and want it to work. So bias is really interesting in kind of the view of the author and what kind of, I guess, agenda they wanted to portray in their writing. And then N for nature. Again, what was the kind of format of the article? Was it long? Was it, again, where was it published? So um, an easily accessible article, things like that. Um, D for date. So how recent is this news? Has there been any further updates? Because they might give you something from, say, a couple months back. And for the people who just assume they just have to read the article and give their thoughts, it might be actually the story or whatever case has been given in the article has had an update or has been changed or disproven something in like the recent weeks. So always go and you know do a little bit more digging because sometimes they deliberately throw things in there to see who has gone away and done that little bit of extra research. So date, really important. And then finally, the last A for audience, who has this been written for? Has it just been written for other medical professionals and experts who are kind of expected to have some kind of background knowledge? Or is it for you know, the general public where, you know, anyone can pick up and read it and not feel too confused or, you know, be a bit more thought provoking and stuff like that. So using that kind of panda mechanism, I think, again, if you're struggling of things to come up with content wise, might be worth talking about the reliability of such an article and thinking about the process of behind, you know, medical journalism and research and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's really important also, you know, while making the annotations and jotting things down, to practice speaking out loud, because it's one thing to have thoughts like up here, but then like saying them out loud sometimes is really, really difficult. So practicing with friends or even, I know people say, practice in a mirror or record yourself doing it, which seems very, very uncomfortable. But, you know, it's always good practice. And if you feel uncomfortable now, then it's going to feel less uncomfortable in the actual interview. So I'd rather, you know, get all that cringe out of my system now and kind of critique myself in something similar to the last video I posted, thinking of it in the sense of, if I was an interviewer, what kind of things would I want to pull out of an article? What would I want the medical student to be in front of me to kind of pick up on? And um, looking at it from that kind of angle. But yeah, I think another way of kind of practicing out loud if you don't like particularly looking at yourself, maybe doing a voice note of how you summarize an article, or even getting a teacher or someone, a close friend to listen and say, does this make sense? Am I talking absolute nonsense? Can you see how I kind of linking things together? And again, it's not just on the article and any further research. If you've done, you know, something related to your work experience or volunteering, definitely feel free to bring it in if you feel like it's appropriate and you feel comfortable talking about it. Definitely links can be made to, you know, the skills of a doctor, even though you might be asked those kind of questions later on. If you can make the link and it seems legitimate enough, always try and test it out though to see if sometimes you might be reaching a bit far with a point you're trying to make. But yeah, I hope that's helped. Um, just to summarise, again, look through the article and find anything that jumps out to you immediately. Those are going to be kind of your passion points, I guess. There's a weird ac like, ac alliteration. And then go in line by line and actually deeper think, okay, what can I get out of this? Are there any pillars that jump out? What is the deeper meaning? Well, how does this relate to medicine in any way? Go and do your outside research. Think of more than one opinion and use that PANDA acronym if you're really struggling. Think about reliability, where has this information come from? And that should 
definitely set you up for a good hour long talk but again thinking you've only got around five to seven minutes of an interview being concise also to the point is a fine balance and you can only do that by really practicing speaking out loud so you can if you haven't received your article yet you can practice on articles on like bbc health or even i think bbc health is probably the easiest person place to go to um because that's again written for the general public so if you're able to read an article summarize your thoughts and you know come up with key points that you think might be good and listening to podcasts and things like that too i'd recommend not for the article in particular but just in general the how to become a doctor podcast because i am you know cheeky plug an editor and soon to be co-host on that so i definitely check that one out and also something that helped me was the bmj student um sharp scratch and that's run by current medical students so really really topical topics i guess and then summarizing their thoughts again it's always about putting yourself out into different thought processes even by using things like social media again checking reliability of course but things like tiktok and twitter by following like healthcare professionals and seeing their views on different things treatments diseases strikes i guess and coming back full circle again it's really really interesting to have different opinions and follow people who you might not normally have thought the same way but you know that's all about encompassing what medicine is like interacting with different people and picking up different skills and different thought processes which is again what they want to see but bottom line is they're not gonna want to hear you read off a script or things they really want that spontaneity and kind of think and show me okay what have you taken away from this come back to that whole pbl kind of scenario you know you need to take away some key points summarize if you feel necessary but just stay true to what you're passionate about don't feel you need to talk about the entire article if the last paragraph doesn't really make sense to you or you didn't really care about you know this particular aspect of it this you're in control and you can drive the conversation to whatever path you want to drive down and if you're confident enough and you sound like you know what you're talking about you're more than 50 percent there definitely it's all about your delivery and your performance more than kind of the content and what you're saying and yeah that's all i have to say on the article let me know if you found that helpful at all and if you kind of are struggling with the article don't worry you're definitely not alone i'm sure there's other people who kind of looked at this and thought okay what am i supposed to do with this um but definitely again see it as an opportunity to show off your comprehension skills and being able to talk about a topic um but yeah again dms always open comments open feel free to leave feedback on this in interview <laughs> on this video and yeah i will hopefully see you in the next one depending on what i decide it's gonna be but yeah i'd really appreciate it if you gave it a little like and subscribe you don't have to but it is free so i know the cost of liver crisis and everything but um yeah that's all from me now so i'll see you guys in the next video bye Gross.